Welcome to Thriving Through Menopause. I'm your host, Clarissa Christensen, and we're going to have a really interesting conversation today about the importance of alignment, how that's different from posture, and why it matters if we're going to be doing the sort of exercise that we talk a lot about in this show, which is strength training. And I'm really thrilled to have with me Tracy Sider, a corrective exercise specialist and body alignment coach. Welcome to the podcast, Tracy. Hi, Clarissa. So wonderful to be here with you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure. I mean, you work a lot with perimenopause to postmenopausal women. And I think we all know we kind of get a bit stiff and achy and can't touch our toes, wonder what's happening to us. But mm. I mean, you've obviously made a move and you're now saying that you're stronger, stronger, slimmer, pain free, and happier than when you were in your 40s. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I just turned 54 last month and uh, I never thought, you know, when I was going through my issues in my, in my 40s, which we can talk about, I never thought that like, you know, well into my 50s, um, I would be kind of like aging backwards, or as I like to say, aging audaciously. <laughs> I didn't even know that was even possible. <laughs> That sounds so amazing. And I've done one of your recent workshops and was like, oh, this is a bit different. So we might talk a bit more about that. But you weren't always a movement coach, were you? No, I was not. I was not. This is a second career for me. Um, I worked for over 20 years as a um, as an English language editor, and I'm from South Africa, which is the accent that you're hearing. And I had a I had a business in South Africa where I was editing academic journals. Um, and so, you know, through the whole um, apartheid transition, and I was working um, as an editor in South Africa for a lot of um, international non-governmental organizations. So that was very much a desk-bound job. Um, many hours at the computer, like many of us career women, right? But I thought I was ticking off all the boxes in terms of my movement um, and, you know, being able to age well because I'd been doing yoga since I was 15, um, you know, before Sting and Madonna made it popular. I remember my friends, like back in the 80s, were like, what is this person doing? So, and, and I'd taught yoga part time from 2009, and I, you know, was a gym bunny. So I thought, you know, sitting at my desk all day working and then putting in that exercise a couple of times a week, you know, cardio and yoga mm. and all that. I thought I was ticking off the boxes because that's what we've told is, you know, we get these recommendations from the government that if you do this, this and this, you'll be fine. Okay. Turns yeah. out like not true. <laughs> because, um, you know, our, our body, our, our skeleton, the human body has evolved over millions of years. We have the same anatomical makeup for sure as humans that existed 150,000 years ago, right? That is, that is certainly the, the minimum amount that, that, that the scientists are saying. Yet we are moving a fraction of the amount um, and in a fraction of the ways that the human body meant to move in order to survive. And it was the movement, this natural movement of the body in all these different ways. Um, you know, uh, climbing, foraging, squatting, pulling, lifting, holding, all yeah. these things were required for our survival. And we're required to keep the body happy as well, right? It's the symbiotic relationship. But yeah. now here we are <laughs> in the, you know, 21st century and our survival requires us to be sedentary and still in front of a computer for hours and hours and hours a day. And then, so now we have exercise, right? Because humans have only been formally exercising for the past, you know, a few hundred years. Yeah. So we try and like tick off that, that movement requirement with exercise, which um, we hope kind of fills that box, fills that gap. Um, and for some it may, and for many it doesn't, <laughs> because the body requires way more movement than a couple of times a week doing a couple of things that are really repetitive and not yeah. the natural movement and small and accumulated natural movement that is spread out throughout the day that the body needs. Because 
what lands up happening because of the amounts that we have to sit and because of the repetitive type of exercise that we try to do to fill this gap and for numerous other reasons has to do with our shoes and our clothing and all things like that. Um, we, by the time we're in our 40s, we are actually out of alignment, which means that your skeleton, which is the foundational structure of your body, is no longer stacking up as it's meant to. We're making all these little adjustments when we get up from our chairs so that we can walk around in the world and be fully functioning human beings. But what we don't realize is that we've got all these tweaks and kinks that we think don't matter, um, but they do. Because that means that your brain literally cannot find the right muscles to move you or to exercise you for that matter. Wow. So they, we end up compensating then, don't Correct. we? Yes. Yeah. And all our movements land up being an accumulation of, of cheats. Right. And what I mean by that, and I mean, even walking, like the fi most foundational human movement is walking. And if we can't walk properly, and by that, I mean, use a gait pattern that is um, initiated with the right muscles and joints. If we can't even walk properly, then like we literally can't do anything. properly. <laughs> so <laughs> what this means is that at best, you're not getting the kind of benefit that you could be getting from your exercise or you're walking the dog. And at worst, you could actually be injuring yourself, which yeah. then lands up with all sorts of other setbacks and puts you on the back foot. Because certainly as peri- and postmenopausal women, our yoga, our Pilates, our swimming, our walking doesn't really cut it. We need external load. We yes. need to be lifting things that are heavier than ourselves mm -hmm. in order to, um, to keep our bones happy and our muscles happy to ward off the sarcopenia and the osteoporosis um and if you know if we're going to be going to that external load which we're meant to we meant to be resistance training and strength training mm -hmm. and you know being women who lift heavy things if we're going to go to that with a foundational structure that is intrinsically misaligned and has poor movement patterns as a result Again, at best, you're not getting the kind of benefit or outcomes that you want. And at worst, you may be setting yourself up for an injury. Yeah, which is why chiropractors and osteopathic offices are full Correct. of women. Yeah. And <laughs> sadly, so the men. they can't really help because they are there to spot treat and do something passive to you in order for the real change to happen it has to happen from the inside out so i mean i have a wonderful team of like uh, my osteopath my physio my chiro my massage therapist uh, and in my 40s when i was going through you know all all my issues i had hip pain back pain neck pain it was like playing whack-a-mole it was nothing that required medical attention right i think this is important to say that this is we're not talking about chronic pain or chronic no, issues no. here we're just talking about aging well, which I think is, um, is, is, is kind of really overlooked because we don't even know that that is possible or that there's a route for that. And as I like to call it, I like to say aging audaciously. If you're going to age, you may as well age well. If you're aging well, you may as well age audaciously, right? And be able to like <laughs> cross the monkey bars at the park like I can do now, which I never even did as a kid. Not that that's a goal, but it's fun and it's great for embarrassing my children. But <laughs> this, but. The thing is that um, when I mean, previous to, to, to me doing this work and switching careers um, and becoming a movement and alignment coach, because it was so powerful uh, for me, the, the change was so instant on the one hand and then cumulative on the other. You know, now, years and years later, I'm still seeing my body is getting better and better and better all the time, even as I age, right? Yeah. Um, it it can't be something that is done to you. So rather than well, like being on what I call this, you know, health practitioner carousel of every month, my <laughs> health team had to, you know, keep Humpty Dumpty together just so that I could sit down at my computer to work. Now, you know, I may go for a tuna <laughs> now and then, but I don't rely on my health team as I used to. Um, and I'm now empowered. And this is what I like to do. I like to empower um, my women who come into my reshape method, which is a realignment. It's a reshaping realignment, reshaping your alignment and your movement patterns. I wanted to empower you to be able to 
do this and maintain this for the rest of your life with your help team team there as you know an added extra in case you know in case you need it that's so fantastic was there a particular trigger that sent you down this path tracy um yes i suppose it was <laughs> because um you know, I hope there isn't too much information, but, you know, I had neck pain, back pain, hip pain, the typical stuff, which we told, oh, you know, it's all just, this is like my mid-40s, which we told is just, oh, it's a normal part of aging. We're given the message that we should kind of just like suck it up. It's normal, right? Mm. Um, it's normal and you just need your health team and your medication to keep you together and you may or, you know, may not be using a walk by the time you're in your 80s or whatever, right? It's not a beautiful picture of aging mm. that is uh, that you see um, in your future if you're feeling so, you know, stiff and achy and, you know, putting your neck out when you, like, turn your head to drive and <laughs> things like that, right? The future doesn't look so rosy. But it, it was when... It was when, you know, I started with the sneeze pee in my mid-40s that I was like, oh. okay, what mm. is this about? You know... I, I, and I've always been like a bit of a rebel at heart. And I, re I refuse to believe that like, you know, 10 of pads were in my future because that really does put a dampener, you know, on aging. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so, so I was searching for a solution. I was not, I've always been like a little bit of a rebel at heart. And I just did not, the message that was being given to me that this is just all normal did not sit well with me. I, re I refused to accept it. And so I, I was searching and searching and researching and researching. And my massage therapist at the time actually um, suggested that I take a look at the work of Katie Bowman, who is a biomechanist in the U.S. She's got a fantastic book called Move Your DNA. Um, which is, and, and so I bought Katie's book and then started following her exercises. I went to go and see somebody who was trained by her um, in Toronto. And I was so kind of blown away with this biomechanics based natural movement approach that um, I decided I want to do this. And I went to study with Katie and then I um, started working as a movement coach, um, seeing men, women, you know, 18 to 80. Um, but then I started seeing as I was moving into late perimenopause, I didn't even know that was a thing at the time, that, um, that women at our age and stage really needed a different and more focused approach. And that's when I decided that I was going to really just focus on this late perimenopause to postmenopause um, category because the things that, are need, that need extra attention yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think because you mentioned earlier the sarcopenia, the osteopenia, um, also pelvic floor related issues that Absolutely. women have. So Absolutely. those are things that I think are being seen, oh, they're normal. And people say, oh, I've been in my DAX test now, or oh, I've got sarcopenia, osteopenia, and they're making sort of corrective moves. Um feels doesn't feel right either because surely we shouldn't have to be you know making corrective moves doing less even moving even less because mm -hmm. we're not there or be having to be very um adaptive right uh, in our movements or we don't yeah. even want to have osteopenia sarcopenia in the first place do we absolutely absolutely right and there is the sweet spot as well um there is the sweet spot about 45 to 65 where you know if you if you if you take the approach if you're prepared to kind of like slow down to speed up if you prepare to give yourself the grace and space to kind of step away try something a bit different re reshape your skeleton and your movement patterns come with that we can talk that about that for a bit as well yeah, yeah um you know give yourself the space to 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 hit the reset button right then 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 your future is just so much more wonderful because you can then do all those things and everything that you do is so much more you know even walking right walking 
can really be um, a muscle building, muscle toning, bone building exercise. But depending on what kind of gait is available to you, of course, we need yeah. to have this gait pattern that is coming from the back. It's called a yeah. posterior push off, which is required, which is using the glute and loading the head of the femur correctly. But that means that your leg, your femur needs to be vertical to the ground in your just normal rested alignment. And the problem is that for just everybody, everybody that I see, you know, a modern Western woman, we've all had similar life yes. circumstances, yes. right? Days, wherever we are in the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that our, we are actually tipped forward. Our yeah. leg is actually not yes. 90 degrees to the ground. We no. are tipped forward. Our leg is actually diagonal. Um, and this can be difficult to, to, to work and analyze on yourself. So, you know, invite your community to book an assessment with me so that you can see what I mean. Because, you know, I, I have people coming in to my program or talking to me and like they've got butts, right? Good strong bodies need good strong butts. We probably yes. all know that. So yes. they may have glute mass from doing um, squats or clams mm -hmm. or glute bridges, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Yeah. get that cute butt from doing yoga, all that thing. Fine, right? It looks good in jeans. But the question is, if your leg is not 90 degrees to the ground, if it is not vertical to the ground, your brain cannot find that glute muscle to initiate mm -hmm. your gait cycle. So yeah. functionally, for what is actually happening to your body rather than the aesthetic of your body, for what is actually happening to your pelvic floor, because this is the butt being able to initiate the gait cycle is crucial for pelvic floor wow, health. Of course, you can then think. Then your, it's like, it's like that butt may as well not even be there because the brain is bypassing it and going to a movement cheat. In other words, it is using your hip flexors and your quad to walk. You're doing what's called, most of us are doing what's called falling walk. And so even something wow. as basic as walking, which can do so much and is designed to do so much because humans evolved to walk mm. a lot. Yes. <laughs> a, a lot. lot. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Um, every day, not just on weekends, mm -hmm. but, but not just any old walk. Because what, you know, our movement can be, I'm sure you've heard like, Movement is medicine, right? It's a yes. great hashtag. Hashtag. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I believe that movement is medicine or movement is actually the malady based on mm. what kind of movement patterning you have available to you, of which course. itself is based on your foundational anatomical alignment of your skeleton. Because at the end of the day, we are all subject to the rules of gravity. There is uh, no escaping that. <laughs> no, no. no. You know what happens when you play a game of Jenga? If you keep adding load to a structure that's fundamentally misaligned, of course. things eventually come top and When down. it crush, crushes down. And, of course, we yeah. see that, don't we, Tracy, with yes. the number of trips and falls that yes. often emerge in perimenopause. Women start saying, well, I've tripped over. And yes. then obviously that gets more serious, as we know, because it's osteoporotic right. fractures that yes. really set this um, rubbish in motion. And, and, and we, tr we trip over. And we notice it's also, also um, you know, as you know, I'm a Qigong teacher, that people start to sort of hunch and shuffle when they right. walk. Yes. And obviously we see that more pronounced in older people and they're holding on to the, with the right. little walking frame. Yeah. But they aren't striding forward. Right. Um, and part and, of that, again, is just like, so there are five main alignment points yeah. that I cover yes. and take people through. I have this process for, for bringing the most important alignment points mm -hmm. sort of back into alignment. <laughs> and again, <laughs> that shuffling, right, the shuffling and the falling, a big part of that is, again, about the angle of the leg. Yes. Because... Our lateral hip muscles, our butt and our lateral hip muscles, the muscles on the side of the leg, those are the muscles, those are our balance muscles. Those are the muscles that are meant to be walking us, that are meant to be holding us up. And if your leg is diagonal, again, brain cannot find those muscles. You are quad dominant. And so your quads are getting stronger and stronger. Of course. And your lateral hip muscles, because you're not using them because your brain can't find them to move you around and hold you up, are just getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And so the actual, like, 
the exercise is in, in and of itself, right? Like doing leg lifts or leg raises or whatever. That's not really the answer. It yeah, has you get more quad power, aren't you? Right. And also, we can never exercise. Like nobody's going to be sitting doing an exercise class for eight hours a day, right? No. Which is no. why I take this like <laughs> functional approach. It's just got to be who you are. It's just got yeah. to become who you are and how you move. Yeah, I really, really, I, I like that so much. And of course, when you're talking about alignment, alignment isn't the same as posture, is it, Tracy? No, no, it is not, right? That is really, really important. Um, you know, um, Katie Bowman explains it, that alignment, that posture is the way you look and alignment is the way you work. So, you know, often when I do an assessment, an alignment assessment um, on people, I'll show them where their current normal, because your normal is your normal. Like you can't know any different, right? And it's, no. your current alignment's done a great job of, you know, keeping you alive and functioning as a human being. Amazing. But if you want optimal, then you need to take a different approach. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for example, the whole kind of like, chest up, shoulders back, tummy in thing to fix our rounding of our upper shoulders. No. There is tension, there is muscular and fascial tension that is pulling you out of alignment and holding in your, you in your current misalignment. By now adding tension in the opposite direction to tuck your pelvis or untuck your pelvis or force your hips back or squeeze your shoulders together, you're now adding tension on top of tension um, and creating a whole nother set of problems. Um, because the kind of change that we're after is not change that must be forced or held in the body. That, again, is going to interfere with your movement patterning. Um, we just need to, we, we want to just be able to naturally fall into better alignment. So we want good posture because we have good alignment, not good posture at the expense of good alignment. Oh, that's, a great, that's a really good way to describe that. Yes. Um, so when we get into alignment, Tracy, what are the benefits to menopausal women or women in general being good alignment? So being able to get back into a good alignment means that you have optimal loading of your bones and your muscles throughout the day. It means that you can walk properly. It means that you've got, once your femur is now back at 90 degrees, it means you've got maximum loading gravitational force on the head of that femur, right? And I've heard it said that because we don't have this good alignment of, of, of the leg, it means that all day long you're not getting you know, the head of the femur is a common site of osteoporosis. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. we, want, we want the head of the femur put in an optimal position so that it is maximum force generation all day long, just with you being you. So it also means that your movement patterns are now just generally like creating more bone, creating more muscle, because we don't want to be exercising all the time. A, we don't have time. It's not practical, and it's not what the body likes or wants. No, it's not but, very natural, is it, Tracy, no, it to is go not to the gym? It's very, um, it's kind of like 2D movement. It's, it's, yes. yes, absolutely, absolutely. We get better, better, um, better breathing patterns. In fact, we often, when we're out of alignment, this interferes with our breathing. It means that for many of us, it means that our breath is stuck in, in our neck, um, which creates overdevelopment of the neck muscles, which creates more of a forward head posture, right? And so just generally, you know, the, the, our foot pain, so many of us have foot pain. And that foot pain can get worse and worse. And we have foot pain and bunions and neuropathy and plantar fasciitis. And then that can eventually interfere with your ability to walk. 
right? You want to be able to walk. So it all just blends into the other pelvic floor health, right? Well, absolutely, you know, I recommend that, you know, all women get for proper diagnosis and treatment with a pelvic floor physiotherapist. Again, just like the massage therapist who's working on your neck, that is something passive being done to you and it's a, a function of your, your, your breath mechanics and your movement mechanics. It's the same thing with the pelvic floor. For sure, you need the therapy and the diagnosis, right? But it's also a function. What's happening with your pelvic floor is a function of your alignment and your movement patterns. So I would say, in short, it's kind of like, what is the benefit? Well, you're going to feel like you're 30 or 40 again, right? <laughs> you're not going to feel like any better, right? I'm sorry. Or yeah. Better, right? Yeah. You're going to feel yeah. like you are um, on charge of your body again. Yeah. And, and if we're looking at it, I mean, obviously that's an internal feeling, isn't it, Tracy? But yes. does it show um, on the outside? I mean, it, it, what does it look like? I mean, do we look do we look taller, more confident? Absolutely, absolutely. Right, we look taller because, and you are taller. Like you will physically measure taller because all your bits are stacking nicely on top of each other instead of this hunched forward position. And like, what is this idea of looking older and younger? It is about it is about that silhouette, right? It's about the silhouette. Yes. It's about the shape. So you'll have a younger looking silhouette. You'll just have generally more muscle tone. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you. I can feel my deep core muscles working. Like I'm having a half hour core exercise. I mean, core workout while I'm talking to you because the core muscles are meant to be activating while we speak, except that is not going to happen if you are breathing through your neck or your belly, which most of us are. Yes. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not breathing properly. I mean, I think that's something that we notice. And of course, that's going to flow onto our mental health as well, isn't it? Absolutely, because what we don't realize is that, you know, is that, I, I mean, and we're not breathing properly because we are out of alignment. There are actually mm. physically things happening with your skeleton the placement of your pelvis and the placement of your rib cage that is interfering with your breathing mechanics, right? So when we get those bits back into where they belong, <laughs> which is closer <laughs> to the skeleton, right? The skeleton is an anatomical neutral, right? Every skeleton, every skeleton model, every skeleton diagram, they're not bits and pieces all over the place. They all look the same. It's anatomical neutral because that yes. is the starting point, the, the, the factory default position of mm. where our bones should start from in order to get um, maximum force generation and range of movement from the body. And, and the point is that most of us aren't in that anymore. And, you know, mi millimeters and centimeters count when it comes to vectors. And mechanic. <laughs> so it may not look <laughs> like a lot, right? But right. even the smallest change can make a massive difference in what kind of um, force generation and, and, and range of motion um, you have available to you. Um, and because most of us are stuck in this shallow neck breathing pattern because that's all available, that's all that's available to us based on our alignment, we don't realize that our nervous system is actually upregulated yeah. because we're not – the body's almost panicking to get the, the kind of gas exchange that it requires. That when we can settle down into the breathing mechanics coming through the rib cage, not interfering with the downward excursion of the diaphragm, there's almost like this just calm <laughs> that comes <laughs> over the body. The other thing is that for most of us, in terms of our alignment, this is maybe getting a bit technical, our psoas is overactive. Um, yeah. Very much function of alignment shifts that happen when we're pregnant, which we are never properly rehabilitated out of. Uh, but I, I see something similar in women who have never been pregnant as well. But certainly in women who have, have had a pregnancy or two or three, there are major alignment issues um, in the body. And that so is as our fight or flight muscle. So oh, yes. once we know how to calm that down, it will bring the ribs back into a better position, which means you've got better core control, which means you've got better bladder control. You know, what's, what's amazing about this kind of work is that so many things are just spiraling off everything else, and it just all happens at the same time. It's 
quite magical, but it's not really. It's just science. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also showing us how interconnected the body is throughout the whole thing. We're not sort of separate parts and I think that's part of the issue also with sort of modern medicine we kind of segment it someone looks after this bit and someone looks after that bit and I think we become thinking that we're mm. sort of little bits and pieces yes. yet the body moves as a whole absolutely yeah. that's crucial that's crucial thank you for bringing that up yeah because um absolutely our medical industry is reductionistic and spot treatment focused mm -hmm. which yes you know if i'm getting into get I'm, if I'm going into an operation to get my left knee replaced i don't want them taking off my right toe <laughs> want, <laughs> you know to focus on the left knee right but barring an acute issue in the body we have to be taking a whole body approach um because we are held together by fascia. We're held together by mm. this internal cat suit of connective tissue that wraps around the cells, the bundles of cells, the organs, everything. It is just pervasive through through the whole body, you know. And so what is happening at the big toe is affecting what's happening at the knee, at the shoulder, at the head, and then that's all happening backwards, right? Mm. So while absolutely there's certainly, a, a, you know, place and space for reductionistic spot treatment approach. If you, after that acute period is over, you need a whole body approach. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's probably a good kind of rule of thumb for anything yeah. that's going on with our health that yes, we need to, you know, attack the bit that needs most attention. But after that, mm -hmm. it's always got to be a holistic because we're a holistic being. We're not, we're not, we can't do one thing without it impacting the other. I mean, exercise affects sleep, sleep affects how we, how our weight goes. Right. You know, here you're talking about alignment and breathing and pelvic floor. Everything weaves together. It does. And it does. Uh, uh, certainly, I think that, and I think it was interesting you mentioned the fashion because I think there's becoming, a lot more understanding of just okay. how important fascia is for our whole health. For sure. Fascia is the new black. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, which is why the approach that I take in my Reshape Method program, you know, and, and, and the other thing I'd like to say is that it's not only a whole body approach, it's a whole life approach. We do the work on the mat to improve the movement patterning to get better muscle balance to work through these sticky bits of fascia right that's the movement on the mat but we have to take it off the mat into our lives so it does require a whole body whole being um approach as well because you know what we do while we're exercising for the time that we're exercising is awesome but at our peril do we ignore like the other 23 hours of the day yeah, exactly, because that's when we're actually actively moving. Yes. In our lives. Or that's not, when we, as the case or not, or right. not, you're, well, a not, you know, is, is probably very true. I mean, those of us who are now lucky enough to work for ourselves, work from home, we can get up, we go and down the stairs, go for a quick walk, do a stretch. It's pretty hard to do that in an open plan office. It is. But if you know what to do, it is a lot yeah. easier, right? Yeah, So I, a big part of what I do is also because <laughs> <laughs> what is quite interesting is that, you know, when I, when I closed the editing business and decided to become a movement coach, I was thought, oh, this is amazing. I'm just going to spend the whole day exercising. <laughs> Turns out, you know, when you're running an online yeah. business, how many hours, I'm not spending more hours in front of the computer than I ever did as an editor. But the difference is that I have structured my workspace, my time, my life in, 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 in order for it to flow with the movement. I'm taking people on a mindset journey as well, from an yeah. exerciser mindset to a mover mindset. So yeah. I have a whole setup. I have a whole lot of different workstations that I'm moving through throughout the day. I have some specific exercises that I do while I'm working. I've got all my paraphernalia at the floor here. I'm standing up, I'm sitting down, I'm on a perch stool. And in my movement breaks, I am doing 
corrective exercises, or as I like to call them, magic moves, that move the needle. They are very specific, and you're doing them for a very specific purpose in terms mm. of changing and maintaining your new alignment, core control, breathing patterns, all these yes. things that we were discussing. So, you know, and the brain likes to do things that it gets reward for. If you know that yes. this is not just an arbitrary stretch, it's doing something very specific and you know you're doing it properly, then your brain's going to want to do it. Um, you know, and I do have many people in the reshape method who do, is, who do work in open plan offices, right? <laughs> um, and that's what's great about the community that I've yeah. built because we do land up having to be a little bit unconventional, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you maybe insisting on, you know, getting a sit-stand desk, which also let me just say to people, please, please, if don't just suddenly now stand for eight hours a day. That is not the solution. No, no, I no. I actually need to get no. up with my perch still because I've been sitting for too long now. Many people think, you know, sitting is the new smoking, and so they'll get a standing desk and they'll force themselves to stand eight hours a day. Terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. Because we were not meant to stand all day either. We were meant to go through all sorts of different ranges of motion, and now you're also standing and loading on the skeleton that's misaligned and – you're, you're tired, so you're slouching into it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, like, we want to move through different stations. So I help people to be able to do that as well. But yes, it does um, often mean that, you know, you're going to get funny looks from people. Eventually, they won't care. Eventually, they'll come up to you and ask you what you're doing. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so great. So, if someone has been listening to this conversation and says, wow, that's amazing then how do they go about starting to change their alignment? Well, the best thing to do is to, um, to book a call with me <laughs> and yes. to have an alignment assessment, right? Just even knowing where and how you are out of alignment, what proper alignment is, what is the gap that needs to be filled that is a really, really important first yeah. step. Yes. Um, as you know, I, I have like tons of free resources and seminars and challenges. So you people can. are welcome to go to my website, tracysidercoaching.com, to join my Facebook group, which is the Moving and Reshaping Club for peri slash menopause, um, and come and see what, what we are doing there. And then, of course, if you kind of like, you just want to get going on this. You can see some amazing before and after pictures um, of what it means to change your alignment, what it looks like, and what it then means in your body and how you're feeling on my website and in my Facebook group as well. Um, but the best thing, of course, is to try it, right? You tried my crazy. <laughs> yes. To feel that such simple, yeah. small movements can make such a difference. So how did that workshop feel for you, that crazy strong pull workshop? That was, that was so interesting because, you know, We've all been there with the crunching. And then doing that, it was like completely different. I was like, oh, I can sort of feel here, you know, my, where my core really where my core really mm -hmm. is, I think, more than anything, because I think that's quite hard for people. You rock up to like a Pilates class and you, you hear and say, Oh, it's like, you know, whatever it is about feeling the core, and you're thinking, oh, I don't know. I don't know. What is it I'm supposed to feel? Okay. I always thought that was the hardest part. And you really could feel that in your, right. in your class. And that was good, getting in contact with that. Because then right. you have a sense of what's that supposed to be like? What am I really working with? And I think that was my biggest takeaway there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then what a, a big part of what I'm teaching in that particular workshop, right, is that we need to be bolstering. We, we need to know what it is we need to be doing with our bodies. And if, mm -hmm. if you go to the Pilates class, if you go to the yoga class, you know, you need to, I'm teaching you how to bolster out your misalignment so that yes. you can actually get some benefit from, yeah. from the class that yeah. you're in. Yes. And I thought that there were similarities to the very good Iyanga yoga teacher that I had. Yes. She was always big on using the props and the bolstering right. around the neck and shoulders which of course you know but then she was an old, she was an older South African lady actually what and was she oh I have to ask her what her name was her she name was um, Debbie Debbie Belvin okay she okay. was based in Sydney I mean she was yes. very 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 particular and yeah. we were never allowed to do moves without props never 
And she mm-hmm. spent a lot of time correcting your body and making you feel and she'd come and move you, you know. Right. So it was very, very different to somebody who's 20 is showing you in Lycra what they can do. Yes. And yes. we never really, and we never, and it was slow and repetitive. Yes. I remember that very strongly with, right. with training. I, I'm and training and for training. Yoga as well. The problem is it can yeah. end up being a bit boring, right? And yeah, it, it's consistency and fun mm. that is a big part of right consistency yes. is what's going to change your alignment and yeah and in order for something in order to maintain consistency it's got to have a bit of flow and a bit of fun and and and, and be pretty easy to do right yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't want to have to go to the yoga class and do two hours several times yes. a week you know yes. where well, you probably only made about three moves in her class right. in the hospital yes. <laughs> You know, it's, it's hardcore. That, right? <laughs> the thing is, where 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 my approach comes in, right, is that we give ourselves these three months to make this change, to make these huge big gains, and then you are empowered when you go to that yoga class, when you go to that Pilates class, you know exactly what you need to do. You're not relying on the teacher because this is not information that the yoga Pilates teacher can give you or the personal no. trainer. Right, I've been there, I've done that. I was the yoga teacher, I was the personal trainer. I personally got injured and I personally stopped teaching yoga because I knew that I didn't know enough in order to be able to properly help people. That is that is very interesting. Tracy, Tra- Tra- this is fascinating and now I'm thinking, right, now I need to do more of her workshops myself. And, <laughs> and when you said 45 to 65, I thought, oh, well, I'm not at the cutoff yet. <laughs> So, so, uh, it really does depend. Like I do have some ladies in the reshape method who are in their 70s, but they have good range of movement. They have enough range of movement in order to be able to do the workouts, right? What is, exactly. what is, what is so upsetting to me is when I do have people booking an alignment assessment with me. Um, and they are, you know, maybe in their 70s or 80s. I had a lady last week who was in her 80s and she was so excited to get working with me. And I was like, I can't, unfortunately, I can't help you. And um, that that really upsets me. That really upsets me. So I'm trying to help as many people as possible, you know, in this magic phase um, where we are still able to turn things around, um, you know, and, and, and in a way like, um, I mean, I'm sure that lady, for example, can can make progress, but certainly – she would need to be properly supervised and I am an online program. So. Yeah, and that, that's an important thing that if, yes. if that's maybe a message for people listening as well, that if you are, your range of movement is limited as it can be, mm. um, or, or we're older for that, we do get stiffer as we age if we don't get wow. into this space, then maybe, are you really advising someone in person because that person can actually yes. work Yes. and help them move into right you really alignment. want to make sure that people don't get injured as well right which is why yeah. they need eyes eyes on them yes. um but that being said as well right my approach is i do um modify a lot there are some people who think that they've got very that that their range of motion is too limited right and that mm. and that and that the reshape method wouldn't be appropriate for them it really, it really does depend because everything is modifiable, right? What I'm saying, it just yeah. depends like how far gone is your osteoporosis? How far gone is your, is your, is your hyperkyphosis? Like if you are completely rounded over, an online program is not, is not. No, and that, that's a really good thing to say. So yeah. we're going to put your details. It's Tracy Sider Coaching in our show notes. And... Fantastic. I mean, so much advice, so much food for thought, Tracy, that you provided in our time together. Thank you. Well, thank you so, so much for having me on. And, um, you know, it really is my mission to to bring awareness to the fact that there is almost this missing piece, <laughs> right? There's sure. so much focus on, on, on our food, on the food we eat and on our biochemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, and very little attention is given to our movement mechanics, our biomechanics. Yeah. Um, and that is just as important, you know, as our biochemistry. Indeed. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All the best.